Welcome to the CEST Sources tutorial. Today, the CEST Data Evaluation Tool. Just download it from the GitHub repository and save the whole zip file somewhere on your uh, PC and open it with MATLAB, unzip the files, and you will find this big batch2 function minus CEST Sources and just open it. And I will show you step by step what we actually need. So, first of all, we have to include the path. So, I already did that, but you can just run this to add the current folder and all the subfolders to the path. And now, the most important part is to load some raw data. And of course, this is a part I cannot perfectly explain for all of you because you might have different types of raw data. So, in a way, this load function or to create this uh, processed or this raw data for the for the further processing you have to maybe find your own code most important for uh, the following routines are these three variables so first you have this m0 stack which is uh, the stack of an unsaturated image and the mz stack which is the stack of saturated images at different frequencies yeah? so this is the two we need for the um, to calculate the C-spectrum and there's this parameter struct P. They are all, all settings saved like for example the chosen frequency offsets and a lot of other parameters. So this uh, load function is actually written for like uh, DICOMs and um, in a very specific manner but um, you can also go to this load batch file um, where it's described or rather different functions. So this is for Siemens data, for example. But if you have, for example, Philips data, so here's is just an example, you have somehow to read your, these rec and par files and get the signal of these images or these you know, uh, signal files. And um, here, for example, it was like that the first image is the unsaturated image and all the others are the saturated images. And I just um, save store that into the um, in those variables, and the frequency axis is now given in this parameter struct. So parameter in the se sequence, and this is the omega for the offset. And here you just give them like manually, yeah. So it's like from minus five to five ppm, and in eighteen equidistant steps. And there are uh, some more parameters you have to give for the uh, MATLAB routines which are required, for example, the lower uh, limits of slices. So your lower slice you want to evaluate in the upper slice. Don't you, if you just want to evaluate one slice, this is one and one, for example, or eight and eight. Okay, you just give that and then you can go back to the batch and actually have these three variables. So you can also find some example data, uh, which is human brain data uh, here. So I have this M0 stack, MC stack and the parameter P. I also loaded already a T1 map, which I already evaluated, and the B1 map and the external DB0 map. T1 map was acquired with an inversion to recovery, B1 map and the B0 map was acquired with this uh, Wasabi technique. All right, so let's go to the next step which is to create a segment of this data. So we just uh, run this next step and we can now create a region of interest or like a segment of the image we want to evaluate. So I roughly cut out the brain here, for example, and there's also a cut off here and we can cut out the important data. Now the next step is the zero correction. So first of all, we have to either calculate from an external um, WASA acquisition uh, B0 map. Uh, this is stored in this delta B0 stack X. Or we calculate an internal map, which we can do with the C-spectrum data and uh, just run this. And now the minimum of the C-spectrum is uh, actually fitted or by, by a smoothing spline algorithm fitted and localized. And this is written in this uh, variable DB0 stack internal. And uh, yeah, we have to wait until this is done because the C-spectra have to be interpolated. And then we can go to the next step, which is the actual B0 correction. So you just give the, well, either the external or internal um, B0 map. 
you can use a face mapping a method or whatever and just calculate this corrected stack so we run this this runs quite fast and now we just do the normalization which is to see uncorrected of the uncorrected uh, not be zero corrected uh, stack and the c core corrected with external map for example and um, yeah this is just by this normalization function of the corrected data we run this and with that we pretty much have already read in our um, C spectra. We can save it and to um, look at the data we can start this image user interface. If you run this, this is like a whole uh, user interface. You can actually in, uh, inspect the data. So here you see for example the different offsets. And if you click now in this user interface you can see in every pixel the C spectrum and see well there's a decent APT peak and uh, uh, NOE peak and the direct water saturation and down here you see the whole range which was acquired so we also had some points in the macromolecular MT range in the kilohertz range and you also see this very broad uh, magnetization transfer so by pressing shift you can actually adjust the color bar here and pressing shift again sets it fixed now you can scroll through the all the saturated images yeah so this was the water and so on now if you want to calculate the asymmetry we have to um, choose the right stack so this is the stack for the referencing actually so uh, this is for the fit functions later if you want to just calculate the symmetry you pick raw here now to be able to calculate the asymmetry uh, the C spectrum is again interpolated and flipped so we use the flipped uh, C spectra uh, to calculate the linear difference here yeah? and then this is corresponds to the MTR symmetry. So if we do that now we get the typical MTR symmetry functions which is uh, in this uh, data mostly negative because the NOE is a very strong contributor. It's at 7 Tesla saturated with low power. You can also choose the inverse matrix MTRX and you also already see that this uh, increases the contrast a little bit and you can also calculate because we have the T1 map loaded you can also calculate this relaxation compensa compensated zest evaluation AREX. Yeah, that's what you can do. If you want to draw a ROI here and do some ROI evaluation you can uh, click this ROI spec button here if you already draw a ROI, you can use the saved button or you press new ROI. Let's make two ROIs, one in the, sorry, one in the white matter and one more in gray matter region. Then it directly calculates the C spectra and also the asymmetry. It plots you the ROIs that were picked and you see the NOE in gray and white matter and APT seems to be more pronounced in gray matter and here you also see the symmetry of both uh, areas or regions you can also choose like other contrasts so we have the C spectrum here and can you run through the three C spectrum stack you can also load the uncorrected C spectrum which is a little bit shifted then you can load the T1 map and for example draw Roy according Roy's according to T1. So again we can draw two Roy's in really white matter identified by T1 now and maybe grey matter identified by the T1 map. Get again C spectra. You can do the same with the B1 map. Yeah, you see quite inhomogeneous B1 field here in this data because it's a measured at 7t without parallel transmit and again if you click for new ROI you can now choose a region where the B1 is around 1 which would be this orange area actually so here this is really the correct B1 or you have a high and a low B1 yeah and now you have this Draws drawn here in the B1 map. And there's also the delta B0 map. 
and of course the unsaturated image. So with this you have the basic CEST evaluation. If you're interested in fitting C-Spectra pixel-wise, check out the next video.